Hello there. Well, welcome. Um, you're in Unit 3, Indirect Tax and SAP S4 HANA, and you're in Week 1, which is Setting the Scene and Indirect Tax. So my name's Rod Barkworth. I work in the Deloitte um, London offices, um, SAP specialist, uh, do a lot of work in the area of indirect tax, um, and have done for quite some time. So my SAP career started in Brisbane, Australia, which is the reason for my accent. And um, that started 27 years ago. So I'm going to be co-presenting this with Vinod from SAP and Vinod's going to share some slides with me. And hopefully that stops you from getting bored. Now, the other thing that will stop you from getting bored is of course, the fabulous content which is on offer. So what we're going to do in this week is we're going to cover off a lot of the basics for indirect taxes. We're going to start first with a definition and then we're going to talk about the requirements to register. We're going to then talk about the taxability of transactions and how that's determined. Then we're going to uh, go through how to calculate and post the tax amount. And finally, how to manage the tax liability upon payments. So what you're seeing here, with the exception of the actual reporting and some of the initial data that's, you know, shared across customer and product and, or, or, or rather business partner and product and so on, um, you're going to see the central component. Um, so this is very, very good, as they say, nuts and bolts course or nuts and bolts week. Um, let's flip over to what is an indirect tax. So in case you, you are coming at this and you're not quite sure, the simplest way to think about an indirect tax is that it's something like the dot points that you can see there. So you can see VAT and GST, you can see product specific taxes, and you can see customs and excise duties listed. Indirect taxes, um, well, the, the, the seller is generally responsible for charging them. And generally, they're transactional in nature. So that is, they relate to a particular good or service that's being sold. And as we'll see, they relate specifically to some other things as well. Um, bottom point there is super important. So there are separate condition types within an SAP system which are used to accurately um, calculate, monitor, and then reflect the taxes on an invoice, okay? And we're going to talk about the condition type shortly. Before we talk about the condition types, so in the calculation of taxes, we're going to just have a quick overview of what's required to register for and report indirect tax. Now, this is not um, a, a, a kind of, you know, this is not providing you with any level of advice other than some key things to look out for. Um, it's very, very important that you establish uh, the right business structure and the right kind of SAP structure um, using correct local advice so that you understand whether you do need to register for indirect taxes or not in your particular countries that you are transacting in. That said, and that's kind of the fine print out of the way, then we have four categories that we've looked at here. So the first one is this so-called presence in a country. And the presence in a country can range from um, being established there as a, as a um, you know, a full large organization, or it might be just that it's established as a sales organization. There's specific legal terms to deal with those different scenarios. But we're going to say that if there's a presence in a country, generally that gives rise to a need to register in that country. The second category is where there are supplies being made into a country. Now, one of the things that, um, that has happened over the course of time is that countries have built various simplifications so that there is not always the requirement to register in there um, especially if that re results in the need for a lot of registration. So these simplifications can kind of help reduce the number of registrations you need to maintain. Um, but not all countries have this. And additionally, there are certain types of supplies 
which might catch you out. So electronically supplied services, and I'll give you an example of that. That's, uh, for example, when you, if you've got a relatively recent car, you've got the in-car entertainment system, and um, your car might offer some navigation services, or it might offer some additional kind of, you know, functionality, um, pre-departure climate control, that kind of stuff. And that stuff all can result in a, um, an electronically supplied service being transacted, and that can result in you needing to have a tax registration in a particular country. Then there are three and four. So um, categories three is purchases in a country. So importing of goods in a country and buying of services in a country can lead to the need to have a registration. And then the fourth one is owning goods in a country. So even the temporary ownership of goods in a country may give rise to a registration. And in particular, the disposal of goods um, you know, or the export of goods can also give rise to um, the need to report taxes in that country. So bottom point, again, just a bit of fine print there. Check it out with your local advisors. Make sure you've got the right advice. And also just a practical tip, stay close to the sales parts of your organisation. Because sometimes, you know, selling, being very, very incentivized, they want to do business, but occasionally it can lead to additional compliance costs. So one of the things to do is to is to have good process ownership and good relationships with these part of the organ these parts of the organisation, so that then you can help to perform much more of a stewardship role in reducing risk rather than kind of dealing with things last minute. So I'm going to flick over now, and Vinod's going to um, tell us a little bit about the registration abroad. Um, it's brilliant stuff. Uh, so thanks, Vinod. Registration abroad. Registration of indirect taxation abroad, the shortcut reader, is a solution in SAP S1 Cloud Public Edition that enables a single legal entity to perform indirect tax calculation and reporting in multiple countries. Important to note is that reader is not intended for permanent establishments abroad. In the business context, it means Legal entities operating in multiple countries' regions must satisfy the tax and reporting regulation of the country's region in which they do business. Under some circumstances, you are permitted to register legal entities for indirect taxation abroad without having to create a company code for that country region. Registration for indirect taxation abroad RITA allows you to maintain a tax registration country region that is different from the company code country region. This registration helps you then link taxable transactions in foreign countries region for indirect tax reporting and tax payments. In a nutshell, it means it enables automated determination of relevant tax country on third-party purchases and sales, the reusage of tax codes belonging to, to the tax country, and also to be compliant handling of intercompany and intercompany stock transfer. Important also to know here is that the same business need can be addressed in SAP s Cloud, the private edition, or SAP s leveraging the plants abroad solution. Thank you, Vinod, for that. That's super. Okay, so we're going to go now, and we're going to talk about determining the taxability of transactions. And taxability of transactions um, is, is determined on the basis of tax drivers and tax parameters. So the tax parameters are those things which are passed into the pricing structure, whilst the tax drivers are things that affect tax. So if we talk about the tax drivers, the common ones for a customer invoice, you can see that the country of the delivering plant, the country of a ship to party, the taxability of a customer, so whether they're taxable or not in the departure country, the taxability or and the rate of tax of an item in the departure country. So one is the customer taxability, one is the, the, the material or product related taxability, and then the date of the transaction. And the date of the transaction, of course, you will recognise if you uh, went through COVID. Um, many countries changed the rate of their sales tax, reduced it, 
um, to kind of ease some financial burden, um, to kind of stimulate the economy. And that would be a time dependent change where that rate would change. Um, so that's, that's an important concept. All of these things are key to determining the taxability of transactions. So this and the next slide are kind of now going to go through some new stuff and then we're going to recover it again just using, using another slide. So basically the tax determination occurs as part of a pricing process, but tax has its own separate condition type, which is TTX1, for example. Um, each condition type has an excess sequence assigned to it. And the access sequence contains several tax parameters um, which are passed into the pricing structure. And each of these is called an access. Now, each access in turn leads to a different condition table. And in that condition table, it's where all the requirements for the conditions to apply are maintained. So only if all the fields match does this access return a result. And this is a classic example of if then, or if this, then that style logic, where if we check, and we've got all of the matches, the fields matched, then we return a particular tax code. If that check doesn't work, then we go on to the next one. Now, what you can see in the screen grabs there are um, firstly, the um, key combinations on the left-hand side. So if you read that through, and then secondly, you can see the details around the tax condition. You can see here that you've got a country, you've got a date. Then those two fields that have the one and the one, so one relates to the um, business partner taxability, the customer taxability, and one relates to the material taxability. Then we've got a percentage rate and finally a tax code. Right, so this condition defines that when country Germany and where the tax classification of the customer is taxable, the material is taxable, then the tax rate is 19% and the tax code is A1. Now, this next kind of slide covers off much the same thing, but it talks about something very, very important. Right at the top and the bottom paragraphs of this are some important details. So read this through and think about this. So what it is, is there's a sequence of these accesses and the sequence defines the priority at which they apply. So the system may stop searching for a condition record after the first successful access for a condition type within an access sequence. What does this mean in practice? Okay, well, this means that you would normally structure these or prioritize these so that your most exclusive your most difficult to meet set of conditions go first, and then you widen this, as you might say, widen the net to catch the least exclusive transactions. So you might start with something that's very, very specific, a particular product, um, may even be a particular customer, a particular region or something like that. And then you may loosen the logic to actually get to a point where you've got then a general rule, which might be that just generally taxability in Germany is 19%. Um, you can see here in the middle, um, the dot points are rather than numerated list, which is that going back through the same content again, really, which is in a sales order, the condition records for the output tax condition type is checked. So it goes to the delivering country. Well, it's a German plant, then the customer, Okay, well, the customer is liable for ta taxes. They have a one. Then the material is fully taxed, so that gets a one. And based on that logic, then the corresponding condition record with a 19% output tax, and that corresponds to tax code A1, is found and returned. Now, Vinod is going to take over for the rest of this um, week. So thank you for spending some time with me. And over to you, Vinod. Calculate post tax amounts to accounts. Tax codes are used to automate tax rate calculation and post into tax GL accounts. A tax code has three key elements to consider. Tax account is maintained against tax codes posting keys to multiple GL accounts. 
can be used on the same tax code, for example, both sides of reverse charges. Tax rate to which each transaction is subject, calculation of the amount to be posted in the financial documents, and also tax treatment used for reporting, which includes the level of deductibility of input tax. Tax code need to support the granularity required for reporting. At least one tax code per tax classification or tax return box required by most businesses. Maintain tax rates. Tax rates are assigned when creating a tax code and in standard SAP are fixed from the time of creation. However, depending on the country, tax rates can vary over time. Therefore, in the SAP Public Edition, S1 Cloud Public Edition, the support of time dependent taxes, TDT, exists. Taxes have been enriched with the validity rate, so changes can be maintained without new codes. This means it enables simplified maintenance, automated selection of corrected tax rate based on the validity period, reduced list of tax codes. SAP certified add ons and tax engines can help to achieve similar functionality on another version of SAP S4 HANA. Manage tax liability linked to payments. Some tax authorities link tax report to payment rather than invoice generation receipt. Where there is a need for tax to be reported upon invoice payments, then a business can have a process where invoices are posted with a deferred tax code or taxes automatically transferred to target tax code for reporting up an issue of outgoing payment or receipt of incoming payment. Following example we have here, customer document is posted with deferred VAT. We have the account receivable sales deferred VAT, the debts and the credit. And the other example, payment is received from customers and VAT is transferred to target tax code. The account, debt, credit, and again account to debit and credit. New innovations in SAP S1 Cloud Public Edition. Tax Register. In SAP S1 Cloud Public Edition, the tax register is a single data source for transaction taxes, facilitating tax operation for transaction taxes across the globe. There's an open item management of tax items, which visualizes the life cycle of tax lines, such as tax item posted out of business transactions, reported, cleared, or paid and also clear tax liabilities efficiently. Also with the tax register, it is the possibility to visualize posted tax data based on tax specific attributes with the new SAP Fiori app display tax items. Here, it is possible to settle your tax liabilities with the new SAP Fiori app manage tax payable. With it, you can do create tax authorities as a business partner. This is a new role. And also post tax payments based on tax returns, creating with SAP document and reporting compliance or post manual payments, cancel payments and reopen cleared items in case of any incorrect posting. In a nutshell, the benefit of the new innovation tax register is that tax account centric capabilities, improved consistency of tax reporting, a real time tax monitoring, and also an end to end traceability of tax lines from posting until tax payment with actionable insights of taxes. Thank you for attending week one, unit three.